I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building and today on The Build Show we're going to talk about foundation layout tips and tricks. We're going to talk about paint, string lines, and how to mark out a foundation so that you have those marks in the long term. Let's check it out. We are at our Hilltop Aero House and the first thing we're going to mark out is this uh, detached garage. We have a three car garage going over here. We have a basement going over uh, for the house a little ways away. They're completely separate structures. And so we're gonna start up here and uh, we're gonna start by marking things out today. We don't have a plot plan for this project. Uh, this is a lot that's in the county. They have plenty of property. I think that they have 12 acres or something like that. And uh, we can put the structure wherever we want. So this is just something that we talked about with the clients. We marked it out roughly and the clients approved where both things are gonna happen. So next. Uh, you should be considering your plans. So this is a Steve Basic house. Uh, one of the things that uh, his office does for us is they actually provide diagonals on the plans so we don't have to do the math. That's really fantastic. It takes two seconds in CAD. It, it's not a problem for them to have to do that, but your concrete guy is gonna have to do it or you're gonna have to do it, and it's gonna take 20 or 30 minutes for you to get all the squares on the house. Ask your architect to do that. Next. We're marking things out and you can see that I'm holding a spray painted white stake, a white flag and white paint. Uh, the reason that we're using white is white doesn't correspond with any of the marking paints of the uh, dig right or call before you dig or the, 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 the services marking companies. The white is, in our opinion, uh, the owner's color or the contractor's color. So we've pulled our squares, we've set uh, rebar uh, pins at the corners of our foundation. We'll mark those corners with white and then uh, we'll mark our, our both sides of our footing. So let me show you how we're setting up our string lines and uh, marking out our footings. Okay, so we're starting our layout here. We actually have some stuff marked out. We're just filming again to show you some stuff. Uh, this is the white flag that we set uh, as a ballpark with our client. And then this was our primary corner. So this was our starting stake. And uh, my string line always has this loop in the end of it. We're able to loop around here and pull. We've worked our way all the way around the building. I thought it was worth showing you. This is literally the only knot in my string line. So if I take this line and I wrap it six times, I'm able to place it around the stake, pull both directions to take the slack out. And then when I pull this back, I can just drop it and it tightens itself in place. Now, when I need to take this loose, all I have to do is unloop it off the back and pull parallel to the direction the line's running. And now I can lift that out and the string is just a string again. That way I can change things around and not have to untie knots all day. Uh, you'll see my, shake, my stake is shifting just a little bit, but I'm not worried about a tiny bit of movement. Uh, we're, we're staking out the foundation here. Uh, this will be much more stable when we're doing batten boards or something like that. So again, six twists, wrapped it around the stake. I can lift it off and then pull it parallel with the line. And now my line is not free again. So now if I'm gonna continue, and I'm gonna now have to tie it a third time. If I'm gonna continue on, because I want this line back over that direction again, I can pull it tight and then I can just go this direction, leaving some slack. We have our string line here. We're pulling from the corner we were just working at. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but we've taken a Sharpie and actually put a mark on our line here, measuring the 24 feet. What we've done is we've staked twice 24 and 26 feet, and we've done it at both ends because we actually have an offset and we just want them all the way across so that we know they're straight. So. I have the 26 foot mark, now I wanna to pull to the 24 foot mark, but I'm not gonna cut my string because I might want longer than 24 feet of string at one point. So my line runs from that direction, it's loose. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna loop it a few times, I'm gonna pull it down, and then the side that's gonna remain loose, I'm gonna loop around twice and I'm gonna cinch it back down over itself, and now I have a string line that can lead that way that's tight. So. Starting with that one knot, I now have one, two, three, four, five knots that will pull out in this line, and I can run this line all the way around the whole building without stopping or cutting or having to have more than one string line. 
Okay, now we have our perimeter string line up all the way around the building. We're able to uh, mark both sides of our footing. The reason we mark both sides is to avoid any confusion with our excavator. Some people in our market mark the inside of the dig, the outside of the dig, or the center line. So we're just gonna mark both sides. The architects called for a 16 inch wide footing, 32 inches deep. That's what we're gonna do. We believe that that's more than enough to support this garage. So what I've done is I've taken uh, uh, one of our stakes and marked 16 inches and five inches on it. And this is kind of like my story pole, uh, but I'm gonna think of it as a marking jig. So I have two lines that the five inch mark. I'm gonna align this visually over underneath my string and I'm gonna put a dot here and a dot here. And that's gonna reference my entire foundation or my entire footing. If my the outside of my building is at that five inch mark that puts my plate basically in the middle of our uh, footing once my once my plate goes on you know after the foundation is done uh, and by holding this and walking around the entire building i put marks about the distance apart that i can swing my hand and hit with paint and then all i have to do is a big game of connect the dots all the way around the foundation and i do it on the inside and outside both and now there's no confusion as to what's going to happen uh, the only thing we have left here to mark out is a couple grade beams on the inside so let's do those real quick and then we'll talk about why they are where they are Okay, so we are wrapping things up here. We marked out our two grade beams here. Uh, they might be hard to see on camera. I don't know if you can see them or not. It looks like you probably can. They are marked with a different type of cross hatching in an effort to denote them as being something different and even make notes for myself. Uh, one of the other things that we did, uh, I'll show you this one because it's easy to see. We set offset stakes for our corners. Uh, we normally do this at least for the corners of the building. Uh, and you can see that this says 10. OSC stands for outside corner. So when they excavate, and there's another one here, there's two more over there, there's a couple behind me, they're gonna get rid of these uh, uh, rebar pins that we installed for our outside of the foundation. And uh, we don't care if those go away right now because we have our outside corners staked out now. They're offset far enough the equipment can get in. I think that uh, if you follow these simple little steps, we have much clearer communication. We're able to maintain measurements throughout the process. We're able to communicate what we want to the uh, excavators. Everything's well thought out and we haven't even dug a hole yet. So thanks for watching this week on The Build Show. Don't forget to turn in every day of the week. Rice Singer, Steve Basic, Wade Paquin, and Brent Hull are putting up videos. I'm really happy and proud of those guys, and I'm proud that I'm part of something that they're part of. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>